What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the new episode of Three Point Lead. My name is Max Loeb, Loeb's Leads. We are talking about the wild cards today. And if you've been following along on Instagram, you will know that my wild card episode was prepared to be the Miami Dolphins, the Buffalo Bills. We will talk about both those teams and the Dallas Cowboys. I am recording this about an hour after Jerry Jones' comments about CeeDee Lamb going all in, um, the season tickets, the Patrick Mahomes comparison. And as much as I think when all the record predictions are done, they'll wind up in a wild card spot in the NFC. I think they belong under the title that my Giants will be going under tomorrow. And that's where do I even start? So they will be tomorrow with the New York Giants. The Giants won't get their own episode. We'll talk Cowboys Giants tomorrow. Bills Dolphins today. Now, if you guys are new, you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe and hit the like button so you make sure you see the next video coming out tomorrow. If you're listening on Spotify, make sure you give the podcast five stars. Make sure you follow as well so the other episodes pop up for you. Without further ado, though, let's get into this Dolphin schedule. I'm going to pull this up on the YouTube for anybody watching visually. I think you guys are going to be really surprised as to how difficult the end of this schedule is. Let's go through it, though. All right, so the Miami Dolphins open up at home against the Jacksonville Jaguars. I think that's a win. I, th I think the Dolphins are good enough to beat the Jacksonville Jaguars. Thinking about the Dolphins offseason, we didn't really talk about that much, but there really isn't much to write home about. Um, Connor Williams will hopefully be back playing a full season. They lose Robert Hunt along the offensive line. Teron Armstead's back. It's a, it's The offense, to me, is pretty similar. I mean, two is if, if he holds out, he's not going to miss time during the season. If he holds out, um, the offense to me is pretty similar. Fascinated to see what Odell was or Odell does, excuse me. But I don't think this is a wildly different team. I think this is a, a pretty similar team to what it was last year. <sighs> Maybe a little bit better defensively. I don't know. I think they had a lot of talent last year. Didn't really mix well with Vic Fangio. He's obviously gone now. Uh, he's in Philly, so we we we'll wait to see how that goes defensively. But a solid defense and a good offense. I think this is you know it's a capable team. It's good. They're going to be above five hundred. But the real question is how much. So weeks one, two against the Buffalo Bills, and three on the road against Seattle Seahawks. I actually have them winning all of them. I have them starting six and one, guys. Six and one. And spoiler, we'll go through the entire schedule. I don't have them much above 500, if that puts into perspective how hard the second half of the schedule is for them. But good enough to beat the Jaguars. I think they'll probably wind up splitting with Buffalo. So I'll give Miami the early game in Miami week two over the Bills. I think that's very, very rational and reasonable. Um, I don't love the Seahawks. I, I really don't. I, I think Miami is a much better team, both sides of the ball. Um, Tennessee, though, that that's one where... You know, I think the Dolphins come in riding a little too high. Obviously, Tennessee beat them last year, too. Um, this Tennessee team is noticeably better. I think Tennessee shocks them, goes on the road to Miami and beats them. Then in week five, I think this is a Miami scores 40 points on the Patriots, even on the road, um, and beats them. So they head into their week six by four and one with a loss to the Titans on the road. And then they get the uh, the Colts on the road. Two weeks to prepare for a team is a really long time. I would normally like the Colts in this spot, but Miami's coming off a bye, playing Indianapolis. I think this is Miami's game to lose. I think Miami wins this one. Week eight, they host the Arizona Cardinals. I think Miami wins this one. So I have them starting six and one, or sorry, five and one, five and one, not six and one, five and one. I'm going to read you guys the opponents Miami has after that week eight game against Arizona. And like you just like, they're five and one right now. So in order to be above 500, they're going to have to win four games. Think to yourself right now, can this team get above 500? They play Buffalo. They play the Rams. They play the Raiders. They play the Patriots again. They play the Packers. They play the Jets. They play the Texans. They play the 49ers. They play the Browns and they play the Jets again. It's not a lot of wins there, guys. There, there are not a lot of wins there if you are the Miami Dolphins. Now, week nine, I said I said they split against Buffalo. I think they do split against Buffalo. I think they go on the road, lose at Buffalo. Week 10, I think they go on the road. Monday night, L.A., I think they lose to L.A. And I'm looking at this Raiders game like, that's a spot, shorter week. 
Raiders coming off a bye. Ah, it's so tough. I'm, I'm still going to go Miami, but I think that's going to be a very close game, a very good game. Week 12, if you guys listened to the Patriots bottom feeders episode yesterday, I think they start hit, start to hit their stride later on the season. I have the Patriots actually beating the Dolphins in week 12. So right now, if the Dolphins started 5-1, and one, they're going to be 5-2, 5-3, 6-3, 6-4. After a game against Green Bay on Thursday night, a short week, six and five. I think Green Bay takes that game. Miami's traveling to Green Bay. This would be week 13. Would that be December, right? Green Bay in December, Miami. Yeah, I'll take Green Bay. However, that's Thursday night. The next week, they get the Jets on Sunday. I think the mini buy plays in their favor a lot. <clears throat> and I think Miami beats the Jets in week 14. So that's what, seven and five now for Miami? Nice. This end of the schedule is a gauntlet. Houston, San Fran, Cleveland, New York. One of those games is at home. I think they go into Houston. They lose to the Texans. Texans will also be coming off of a full bye, I believe. They'll be coming off some extra time off, though. I think they lose to Houston. As wild as this is going to sound, oh, you know, I'd mix this up. Mm, oh, no, I didn't. No. As wild as this is going to sound, excuse the, pardon me, um, I think Miami matches up awesome against San Francisco. Even even the Niners coming off of a mini buy, I think Miami matches up really really well against San Francisco. The also the reality is in Week 16, Niners probably won't have nothing to play for. The division could be clinched though, and you know that that could play into into the hand of resting certain players. You never know. Um, definitely a scenario. But I think Miami matches up really well, especially their offense against the Niners defense. I, whew, I think Miami can will have their way through the air. I think Miami wins that game. But the last two, travel to Cleveland, Cleveland off of a mini buy. I think they lose to Cleveland. Travel the Jets the last week of the season. I think they lose to the Jets too. So that's going to put Miami at 9-8, and eight, guys. 9-8 and eight after starting 5-1. and one. And I don't think it's fault of Miami's. Like, I think Miami's a good team. I think offensively they'll be able to create some explosive plays, score a lot of points. But at the same time, can their defense keep them in games against teams like Houston, against teams like the Rams, even the Bills, maybe Tennessee? Like, I don't know. That schedule at the end of the year is a gauntlet. Gauntlet. Like, it's it's tough. It's the toughest outside of Pittsburgh, I think, to end the year. It is a really, really tough end of schedule. So right now I have them at nine and eight. Uh, let's move to the Buffalo Bills, who, again, I think are super comparable. I think the, the Bills, the Jets, and the Dolphins, there's not much that separates them at all. Um, but when you look at the bill schedule, I don't know. I don't know. It's pretty difficult to all uh, for anybody watching right now. I'm going to switch the, uh, the schedule over the bill. So bear with me for 10 seconds here. Here we go. Come on. All right, Bill's schedule is up. Um, yeah, so I, I think the Bills' schedule is a little more difficult than people give it credit for. Before we talk about the Bills, though, I do want to give a shout-out to our sponsor, Better Picks. If you guys aren't on Better Picks, it is easily my favorite way to pick higher or lower on your favorite athletes their yards, whatever it may be, season long, in game, however you want to slice it. And as we get into August, I said this last episode, I'm going to start giving my season long predictions with the teams that I'm doing schedule release videos for. So you definitely want to make sure you get on better. It, again, the best way to, to play fantasy sports, you pick higher or lower on your favorite players. And if you join with Code Leads, you can find that link to join in the description on YouTube. Any of my socials, they'll match your first deposit. You want to get in on the action now while they're matching it up to $250 as well. Um, this is, this is the place to be when it comes to, to sports picks, when it comes to predictions. And again, on better, I'm going to be giving you my specific ones. So make sure you're tapped in there again, join with code leads, best way to play. Let's talk about the Buffalo bills. This is another, another team. That's like off road schedule, really tough road schedule. And when you look at playoff teams, like they they find ways to win big games on the road, but when you look at Buffalo's road schedule, like they have obviously they have Miami, New England, and the Jets. They have Baltimore, they have Houston, they have Seattle, Indy, Rams, 
Lions. Like, that is a tough road schedule, guys. Really tough. Week one, I do think they open up with a win against the Cardinals. I don't think anybody's going to disagree with me there. Um, I mean, week two, like, that, I have them losing Miami. Week three off of that mini buy against Miami, uh, I have them beating the Jaguars. Week four and week five, back-to-back weeks, travel to Baltimore. Week five, travel to Tennessee. Week six, travel to New York on Monday Night Football. I have them dropping three straight. Like, I think that's the reality of the Buffalo Bills beginning of the season because tough, tough road games, newish offensive weapons for Josh Allen. I don't think they're ever going to struggle to put up points, but you're going to have to put up a lot of points against Baltimore, a lot of points against Texans, and then the Jets will, will score and play really good defense. So I think those are three games they can lose and, and will lose. So I think the Bills actually start two and four, but like, listen to the next couple games because it, it gets easier, at least the next couple weeks for them. Home against Tennessee, I think they can beat the Titans. I think they do beat the Titans. On the road against Seattle, tough environment, but the Bills are a better football team, so I, I don't see them losing that game. Week 9 against the Miami Dolphins, I think the Bills win that game. Uh, we talked about them splitting. I think in Buffalo, the home team wins. In Miami, the home team wins. Week 10 on the road against Indy, I, th- I think the Buffalo Bills win. Week 11, hosting Kansas City, I think the Bills win that one too. I think that's one of the Chiefs' losses this year. Every year it seems like, oh, the Bills are going to get him, and they never do. I think this is one of those years where the Chiefs are going to be able to score a lot of points, but Josh Allen can win games on his own. I think this is one of those games. So now they start 2-4, and four, and I'm going to scroll down the schedule for you in a second. They start 2-4. and four. They are what now? One, two, three, four, five. Winning five games in a row, 7-4, and four, going into their Week 12 bye. But their, their Week 13 on is a also a gauntlet. It is tough, guys. Really, really tough. I'm going to switch this over for you guys really quick. Week 13, granted, it's off a bye. It's off a bye. They host the Niners. I think they lose that game. I think the Niners are a better team on both sides of the ball. I think they win that game. Week 14, they travel to LA. I was so tempted to pick the Rams, guys. You have no idea. But I think the Bills win this one week 14 in LA. But I don't think they beat back-to-back playoff teams. I I think... Detroit beats Buffalo week 15. Detroit is also coming off of a mini buy. So Detroit takes care of business at home against them. Week 16 against New England. Uh, I have the Bills at home defeating the Patriots. Week 17 at home against the Jets. I have the Bills also winning, putting them at would be 10 and 6 going into the last week of the season where the Jets were also were they 10 and 6? I think they were 10 and 6. I think they were 10 and 6 going into the last week of the season. Or yeah, 10 and 6. And then I have the Buffalo Bills, the New England Patriots, Week 18. We talked about it yesterday. This, I think, is the Patriots' signature game. I think the Patriots beat the Bills Week 18. The way it shakes out now, it would, I'm trying to think, it would, the tiebreaker would be conference. So I'm going to go and look at the Jets' schedule or the Jets' record in conference that I have. If the tiebreaker was conference, maybe versus playoff teams, I don't know. The Jets and the Bills would both be 11 and 6 if if it was the other way around. Like I think I don't know. It's something about that week 18 game against the Patriots just screams Patriots legacy game Drake like figure they figured out week 18 they're always due for a good game against Buffalo. I think the Patriots beat them. The Jets win this division so we'll, to recap the entire AFC East because we're done with it now. The Jets at 11 and 6, obviously I'm not going to tell you guys where the uh the rest of the conference seedings are for the wild card teams but right now the bills finishing at 10 and 7 miami finishing at 9 and 8 and new england finishing at 6 and 11 actually new england winning six games that's above their total which is cool um i think that's how the afc east shakes out you guys let me know what you think i think this is very rational for every single team anything you disagree with put it in the comments if you guys are listening on spotify go to youtube put it in the comments there but i appreciate you guys watching appreciate you sticking with the afc east we'll finish the nfc east tomorrow july july 26th Um, And then we will move to, I believe, the West the week after that, which will be really fun because I think the AFC West is going to surprise a lot of people with the records. We know who's going to win the division. We know know who's going to win the division. The records are going to surprise some people. I think we can get another wild card team out of there. But I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate you guys listening. Have a great rest of your day. God bless.